All right, praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Anybody, testimony, praise report, God God did something great. God did the miraculous that we know about, that we've heard about, that we've seen. (laughs) No? Um, Well, he's faithful. He's on time. And, you know, his grace hasn't ran out. Thank you, Jesus. Um, How about a prayer request? Anybody have a prayer request? No, I just, um, my wife isn't feeling good. Bubba still kind of looks a little funny. Um, I don't know if this is allergies. Um, Other than that, continue to just pray for um, the Gutierrez. You know, she's still getting healing her uh, from surgery and whatnot. Um, You know, for Myrna and the family, of course, uh, Audrey. And the family there too, just for God's peace and you know that the grieving, you know, that we grieve and mourn according to you know yes. to God's perfect will and plan, um, and that He can get us through the hardest times. Um, so, yeah, if you don't mind, if you just want to close your eyes with me, if you want to lift your hands, feel free. If you want to stand, you're more than welcome to stand. You're you can come to the front if you want. That's you know whatever you're comfortable with, Lord. We want to thank you tonight, Lord. We bless you and exalt you tonight, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are mighty. You are holy, Father. And I thank you for your presence in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in us. And I thank you, Father, for all the things that you're doing around us, Lord, in our homes, in our schools, in our places of work, in our neighborhoods. Father, we are grateful to you tonight, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your name is above every other name. And everything is under your feet tonight, Lord. And I step under your authority, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your hedge of protection. I thank you for your hedge of purity. I'm so glad tonight that I've been filled with the gift of your spirit, that we're covered by the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for ordering our steps and empowering us by your grace that we can forgive you, others, and ourselves because this we cannot do this on our own. We can't do these things without your grace tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are long-suffering, and I thank you, Father, for the fruit of the spirit tonight. Lord, I bless you and exalt you. I praise your wonderful name above every other thing, Lord. And I come before you tonight, Lord, and I cast my cares upon you, Lord, because I know that you care for me. And we command that each and every one of our thoughts, imaginations, and ideas would be taken captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ. That we would be baptized with the spirit of a sound mind, that we would be filled with the mind of Christ. Lord, and I pray that you would plow up the fallow ground of our hearts and our minds tonight, Lord. And that the light of Jesus would flood our hearts and minds, Father, and that you would prepare this ground, that you would make it good ground, that you would make it good soil tonight, Lord. And that you would minister to us tonight, Lord, that we we would be ministered to by the word of God and that your word, that seed of the word of God would find this good ground, that it would find that good soil, Lord, that it would be planted there, that it would take root there, Father, and that your word would bear good fruit within us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We lose faith right now. We lose the peace, the love, the joy, and the righteousness of God. Hallelujah, Lord. We lose restoration in the name of the Lord. We lose restoration in the body of Christ. We lose revival throughout the body in the name of Jesus, that our prayer lives would be revived, that our worship would be revived, that our time for reading and studying your word, Father, would be revived in the name of the Lord. We speak to those ministries, Lord, that have become dormant. We revive them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, that we would be baptized tonight with the fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that we would be passionate about souls, that we would be passionate about giving, Father, that we would be passionate about prayer. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you, exalt you, and magnify your wonderful name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. (coughs) Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I didn't mention one of those things that I said for prayer requests, so Lord knows what it was. We spoke it before the prayer request, so God, we're praying and believing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, putting off and putting on. So what we're going to try to see here is we're going to show tonight that our group, that we, even though it is Jesus who saves us, there is nevertheless something for us to do, right? Um, so there are some things that we are expected to put off and then we have some of the things that we're spe- expected to put on in Philippians 2, 12 through 13 in 
this will be from the Amplified. So Philippians 2, 12 through 13, it reads, So then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation, so which that is cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear and trembling, which is using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. Verse 13, For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. It's right there too, you know. It's not in our strength. It's God. It's in him. It's in his grace that is in, it's strengthening us. It's his grace that empowers us. You know, it's his grace that empowers us to be able to forgive him, others, and ourselves. It's his grace that empowers us. <coughs> Excuse me. It's his grace that empowers us to be able to um, let go of frustrations and anger and resentment that that we're empowered by his grace that we wouldn't harbor bitterness and that we won't hold on to grudges. I can't do this on my own, right? We can't do this on our own because we, you know, our selfish nature, our, you know, the, the flesh, you know, we want to hold on to grudges. We want to, you know, keep a hold of these things. We want to be bitter, right? Well, I don't know why we do, but we do. And it's, it's you know, it's not silly. I mean, it's silly, but it's not silly because it's like, why would we choose to hold on to bitterness when it's going to just, just destroy us um so even though it is god who's working in us causing us to want to obey him and giving us the strength to obey him there are still some things that like, like i said that he's expecting us to do he has put the power of salvation within us so it is up to us to work it out right if i want to lose weight right what do there's things i've got to do work first of all work it out i could i gotta maybe i gotta do some exercising you know, maybe changing diet, you know, eating habits. I know I just went to the doctor recently for some blood work. And, you know, I need to change some eating habits of mine <laughs> um, and do a little bit of working it out. <laughs> but <coughs> spiritually, though, yeah, there's things we've got to do to work it out. Um, we must choose to do those things that he's inspiring us to do. So he's, you know, the Lord showing us in his word, which we're going to see here shortly um there's a lot of scripture used in these this lesson for tonight ephesians 4 17 through 24 it's a little bit lengthier um ephesians 4 17 through 24 let me just get a little bit of this i'm, I'm sorry i'm coughing so much it's at that point where it's annoying and it keeps you up at night and keeps your spouse up at night and everybody in the household is sick of it even bubba's like i'll cough and bubba's like <laughs> um so he's even frustrated with it. So this I say and solemnly affirm together with the Lord as in his presence, that you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live in the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. For their more moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is clouded. They are alienated and self-banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them. Because of the hardness and insensitivity of their heart, and they, the ungodly in their spiritual apathy, have, having become callous and unfeeling, have given themselves over as prey to unbridled sensuality, eagerly craving the practice of every kind of impurity. But you did not learn Christ in this way. In fact, you have really heard him and have been taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus, revealed in his life and personified in him, that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, which is talking about completely discard from your former nature, um, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like in the righteousness and holiness of the truth living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. So there's so many different things, you know, that we can hit on in here. Um, 
yeah, so I mean, one of the things, you know, talking about that spiritual blindness, you know, but it's the, you know, it's the light of Jesus that can flood the hearts and minds of those around us, right? It's where it works against that spiritual blindness. It works against that spiritual, that darkness in people's lives, in, in our lives, right? Um, so we are to put off the old ways that we thought and acted on, on and put on the new man, which was after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Right, and we know that in baptism, what are we doing? We're burying that old, that old man, that old sinful nature, um, and but it seems like that guy wants to creep back even after being baptized, right? Even after being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, sometimes that guy wants to see if his lazy boy is, what is how would Bishop say, see if his easy chair is still in my living room for him to go and sit and relax in, right, and have control of the day, and sometimes we allow it. And other times we take control of that and we, you know, hopefully we take control of that thing in the morning. You know, we ask the Lord, you know, would you forgive me of any sin in my life? Would you forgive me of every evil word, every evil thought, every evil imagination that I've had in the name of Jesus? And we put on Christ the first thing in the morning, right? We put on, uh, we allow the Lord, we, Lord, take this garment to heaviness. Give me a garment to praise. We put on Christ. We put on the righteousness of God. You know, we're putting on, praying our armor on. We're believing that we're covered by the armor. Um, and hopefully we're taking care of that old sinful nature first thing before we get into our day. So the Greek word translated put off li literally means to put away or lay aside. So that, you know, that's what it is too. It's just putting away. Once again, it's that grace of God. Lord, empower me by your grace. Give me the strength that I would uh, have that strength and that willingness to be able to conform to the will of God instead of conforming to that old sinful nature, right? And that the, instead of conforming to the patterns and the standards of this world and, and, and not allowing my flesh to run and have its way in my life. Uh, so we could think of this as being put away like a coat that we don't wear anymore. You know, you, I don't have a winter coat down here really because um, I, I probably wouldn't wear it that much <laughs> compared to back home. Uh, you know, you, if you didn't have a winter coat, yeah, you're probably going to have pretty bad days if you didn't have a winter coat um but you know you so in the winter time you know you got your winter coat you're not going to usually wear your spring jacket or your summer you know like like a windbreaker type deal um so like and then the summertime rolls around then you're going to put your winter coat away so that's what we got to think about it like is that we're put actually putting aside my old sinful nature what we i know we've buried it right we've buried it in baptism in jesus name we have buried that old man but like I said, one wants to creep back, and we that's why prayer is so important. It's, it's key in our lives. It's one of the most important things that we have. But in, um, to where we're yielding ourselves to God instead of, like I said, yielding to that. And I know what happens. Sometimes we get, ooh, we're running late, and I've got to be at work, <coughs> or I've got to be at that appointment, or whatever it is. And maybe we don't have that time in prayer that we, like we would want to. Um, I, yeah, and I'm... I'm having a hard time getting up early in the mornings like I used to. I remember coming up here for morning prayer at 5 o'clock and stuff. And I'm, man, I've missed those days. But it was, now I don't know what the deal is. I'm having a hard time getting up and just, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, praise God. Um, so it ceases to be a part of our lives once it's put away. And that's the thing. I, and I can't focus on that either, right? I can't sit there and, and stay focused on it. Yeah, we maybe we stumble. Maybe we, it, you know, we messed up. Maybe we, you know, did something wrong in the eyes of the, in, in the eyes of the Lord. Now, because of that old sinful nature, you know, but we still have a chance to get corrected, right? We don't have to just go, oh, well, this day's shot. You know, how many times do we just want to throw in? You know, this day's shot. Now I might as well just forget it. You know, it's like when we're fasting and all of a sudden we forget and we eat something. Then we're like, ah, eh, it's over now. No, well, let's just start from right here at this point, right? Lord, would you forgive me? I'm sorry for this old nature that's trying to creep in. Father, I pray for your character and your nature. I pray for the Holy Ghost to just, you know, sweep over me right now and, and just move over me in the name of Jesus. Um, so some things that in verse 25 through 32, in part of um, Ephesians 4, it's, talk, it's giving us some things that Jesus wants to put away, us to put away. It's talking about lying prolonged anger you know because we can get angry right but that does that mean that we should have let it prolong in our lives should it just linger in our lives 
No, it shouldn't. We got to take care of that real quick, right? And the thing is, too, we mess up and we we do these things and we've got to take care of th things right now, right? When we catch on a hold of it. You know what? Oh, hold on a minute. I'm just letting this anger just take over. Oh, well, I just lied. Well, let me just wait till I get home and then I'll get in my prayer. No. We just, where we're at, right? At the moment. Lord, would you forgive me? I'm sorry. Would you wash me and cleanse me, Lord? I apologize, Lord. I'm sorry for this. For lying, I'm sorry for this anger and this frustration that I'm feeling right now, Lord. This is not of you, Father. I cast my cares upon you once again, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. Stealing, corrupt communication, bitterness and wrath. Once again, talking about bitterness, clamor and evil speaking. And in this world, it's very easy to get caught up in some some evil speaking in this world today, isn't it? Um, it's very easy to get caught up in the the talking behind someone's back and talking bad about somebody. Um, we just don't have to be part of those conversations because it's going on all around us, right? We could dismiss ourselves and just walk away or whatever. Don't have to be a part of it. Malice or nastiness and wickedness. So, the, And then we have the Greek word translated put on literally means to sink into clothing. So when we're putting on Christ, right? We just need to sink into him. Just put him on. Uh, like I said, that one thing, the example that I always come to is the that heaviness, the garment of heaviness. I don't want to have that garment of heaviness. I want to be able to have the freedom and the liberty of the Holy Ghost to where I can have that garment of praise, to where I can magnify the Lord, that I can exalt the Lord. Um, because we know what it feels like when that he garment of heaviness is upon us and we that depression is upon us. And what do we want to do mostly? We just want to stay in bed. We don't want to leave the house. We don't want to leave our room. We don't want to leave our under whatever. We just want to stay in that pit because we get comfortable in there sometimes, right? And we're, it's something that we've we, we've known. Praise God, but we can be delivered. We can set aside, you know, Lord, help us to take away this garment of heaviness and put on that garment of praise. Uh, is the word used for putting on a coat? How about in Luke 15 and 22, it says, but the father said to his servants, quickly bring out the best robe for the guest of honor and put it on him and give him a uh, a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet. So that's what it's talking about, like putting on a coat, like putting on that best robe. When the father sees, right, the son coming home and he says, you know, get the best robe. That's what the Lord wants to do to, for us each day, clothe us in the best things. Clothe us, once again, I go to the, the garment of praise and the, and the armor of God, and he wants to that we have the mind of Christ, right? These things that he want, we could be clothed in, we could be clothed in Christ every day, and I can walk in and live in this earth. And sometimes we're like, oh, I just don't want to go out there, right? I don't want to get in. I don't want to go out into this world. I don't want to go to work because it just. But he play, he puts us in places for a reason, right? First of all, his light can shine in and through us, to where that conduit. To where we can be that mouthpiece, we could be his, his, his hands and his feet, you know, laying hands on people, praying people through, praying for miracles, uh, whatever it might be for that day or that moment, that opportunity. You know, we have that opportunity each day to connect with him in prayer, you know, that we can connect by his spirit. But what does he want us to do out here to where we connect by his spirit, right? Because once again, it has to be his grace that empowers me or strengthens me even to just be able to step out sometimes out of my comfort zone, you know, cause we're, sometimes we're just not comfortable. Maybe it's in a, a place and there's more, maybe more than one person. And the Lord's like, Hey, I want you, can you just tell this person here? And you're like, Oh, they're with people. Right. You kind of get shy at times. Right. And, but it could be that same grace that empowers me to lay things and put things on. But that same grace that empowers me to be able to, <clears throat> I feel like the Lord wanted to, you know, wanted me to share this with you, um, whatever it might be. So, yes, once we put on a coat, it protects us from the elements. You know, uh, I could think about the, um, <coughs> I could think about whenever I was uh, working at the load rack at Dow, and I was out there loading rail cars and trucks and unloading and whatnot, and those days when it was raining and what, and storming, and they... <laughs> They give us the uh, slicker suits. We used to wear it as rain, rain gear. So you had the slicker pants and then you had the coat. Now, the coat, you could get two styles. You could either have the short coat that was just, you know, everything was kind of long on me anyways. But 
Um, so you had the short coat or you had the long one that would go all the way down. Now, if you didn't have your slicker pants on, you could you were fine with that long coat. But the only thing about it was, for me, they would always run off the long coat and then right to my pants. So the bottom of my pants were always soaking wet. <laughs> so you always had to wear your stump. That's what I'm thinking of when it's talking about we put on the coat <coughs> and it protects us from the elements. So when we put on him, what is it? What is he protecting us from? As well as the armor, as well as the, the garment of praise, you know, to where things happen. Right. And I can praise him in the storm. I can praise him. First of all, when he, the enemy's shooting those fiery darts throughout the day, that I can take my shield of faith. But you know what? I might have that armor protecting me, and I got my shield of faith, but I can still also have, too, is that garment of praise to where, you know what? I'm blocking the fiery darts. I'm qu quenching those fiery darts of the enemy with my faith. And I, I'm, my other hand, I'm like, oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I want to praise you. I want to bless you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because you know what? Why not be able to extinguish those fiery darts? But in the same time, in the same storm, being able to lift up and God, lift up God and magnify Him through it all, and to bless Him. And while you know, and I'm being strengthened, and I'm being renewed, and I'm being revived at the same time in my praise and my worship. Hallelujah. So yes, yeah, some of the things that we should put on, you know, working with our hands that which is good. Edifying words, speaking good things, you know, edifying people. Not too many people out in the world today edifying one another, right? You know, building up each other, encouraging one another, right? It's not too many, not too many people doing that. More tearing down and, and, and people want someone, you know, someone's head needs to be chopped off. Somebody makes a mistake on social media or somebody makes a mistake out in the world. It's all over social media. They need to be fired. They need this to happen and blah, blah, blah. You know, no, no. They said they're sorry, but we don't care. Hold on. People make mistakes. You know, but we could be encouraging to one another. We could lift up one another. Even if it's, you know, we're in a crowd and all of a sudden they're just starting to tear down somebody. You know, we don't have to be a part of that. We can lift people up. Lift them up, you know, face to face by speaking those edifying words, encouragement, but also take them into prayer. Take them to prayer at, at certain times. And, you know. I pray for this person. Maybe it was a coworker. Maybe it was a neighbor. I pray for my neighbor right now. It's, you know, maybe the whole neighborhood's ganging up against them for some reason. We don't know what it is. What you know? Uh, but I pray for so and so right now, Lord. I pray for you to, you know, would you send angels, Lord, to encourage them and minister unto them? And we pray, Father, that uh, that they would be encouraged by you right now, Lord. That they would shake themselves in you, Lord. That your light would shine through and, 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 and flood their hearts and minds right now, Lord. We pray for your peace and your love, Lord, to overwhelm them right now in the name of Jesus. Um, speak, you know, be kind to somebody, showing tenderheartedness to people. Um, forgiveness, you know, that's, and just remember, I know we know this, but remembering that what, what is forgiveness? It's, it's, what, it's doing more for me, right? It's doing more for me than what it is the person that offended me or hurt me. Um, but I've got to, and it has to start here. I've got to be the one. Even if it's a mutual, you know, maybe me and Sister Jean both offended each other. I can't wait for her to come and apologize, you know, ask for forgiveness. I've got to just forgive, right? Sister Jean, you didn't offend me. I was just using you as an example. <laughs> but I, it's, I can't wait for the other, right? I've got to start. I've got to start this. Just in all things, I can't wait for somebody else to show love. I need to be the one that shows love. I can't wait for somebody else to, to share some edifying words. It's, it needs to start here, right? We're, the, we're supposed to be the body, right? We're supposed to be. We, we house this temple. I've got the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have the power of, uh, I got the spirit of God. I got the spirit of the one who spoke everything into existence. I got the same spirit. That walked the earth and spoke things and, and, and calmed the seas and, and cast out devils and, and performed the miraculous and healed all diseases and all sicknesses. We, we house that power, that spirit within us. And we should not walk in this world fearful. We should not walk in this world. We shouldn't walk in the world with a bad attitude. With, with you know, with a horrible thoughts in our minds, right? I know, of course, I, we don't know what, I don't know what was going on in the Lord's mind at different times, but 
we read that he had to pull himself away and go pray, right? What do we, I mean, we got the same opportunity to be encouraged by him, his spirit that dwells within us. I don't need a church service. I don't need a prayer meeting. I don't need to have a conference. I don't need to go fly to Maryland. I don't need to go fly to Stockton, California. I don't need Brother Stone King to come in. I don't, we don't need that. We, all we, we have him. That's all we need. I don't need to come here. I could be in my prayer closet at home. I could be in my car. I could be at work. It doesn't matter where I am or what I'm. I could just call on his name. And I, the greatest power can step in the scene wherever I am at. And his perfect love can just overwhelm me. No matter what I'm going through. No matter what I'm facing. Lord, help me, Jesus, to forgive. Help me, Father, to be kind. Help me to be tender hearted. Help me, to Lord, to Anoint my mouth and my lips and my tongue, Father. Bind up these lying lips. Bind up these gossip, this gossiping tongue, Lord. That the fruit of the lips of you know the, the fruit of my lips would be praise and thanksgiving, Lord. Help me to speak words of edification. Help me to speak truth that I would not lie. Help me to speak words of love. Help me to speak words of uh, you know whatever it might be to, to that's going to help somebody. It's going to build somebody up. It's going to encourage somebody. Ephesians 5, and this is a little, this will be your homework, because this is a little bit lengthy. It's Ephesians 5, 1 through 33, and you could uh, take, you know, take a chance to read that later throughout, or later, you know, sometime this week. Um, but it continues to list things that we should put off and put on, such as uh, putting off fornication, uncleanness, filthiness, foolish talking, jesting, idolatry, works of darkness, and drunkenness. Putting on love, right? Put on love. Put on putting on the you know the fruit of the spirit, wisdom, thanksgiving, and submission. You know, Lord, help us that we would be you know uh, that we would be clothed in this garment that would help us. This you know, if I can say it like this, this garment of grace, it's where we you know we're able to submit ourselves to you. That we're able to Lord to allow you to put us on your Potter's wheel throughout the day that you just continue to shape us with your hands, that you mold us with your hands, that we're not molded by the things of this world, that we're not changed, that we walk into a place and we change the climate, right? Because of your spirit, not because of us, but we walk in and we change the atmosphere. We change the climate of things. We're not, uh, you know, we're not one where we walk in and everything just changes us, everything that's around us. No, but, the, you know, that we walk in and all of a sudden, course then we're going to get noticed right we're going to get noticed and, and some of it's going to be a positive recognition and some of it's going to be negative to where we get those stares that we want then we want to stare back right with a bad attitude but we just need to be you know what what would jesus do what would you do lord in this situation and he wouldn't shy away from it first of all right but he wouldn't you know uh he would show it love, right? He would show it love. He would show compassion. He would show empathy. First of all, you know, because what are they going through to where they're they got it? They're coming against me like this, okay? First of all, it's the light, light in that dark place. It's not comfortable to them now. Why is this light? And maybe they feel just like that light of God is just shining on to where they feel. Maybe they're feeling conviction. You know, conviction. It's, we know it's a good thing. They don't know that. Um, yes, yeah, so we just got to be ready for all things. And God help us. Thanksgiving. I could give thanks in and for all things. It's not easy to forgive God or thank God when you got a flat tire. First thing in the morning is raining outside, though, is it? <laughs> and you're running late. And your spare's flat. Everything's working against you, right? But thank God, it could be worse. Thank you, Jesus, because I know that you're with me. I know that you're protecting me because that flat tire might have saved us from getting into a head-on collision down the road. But we don't think about that. We're like, ah, this tire right here right now, though. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for whatever you're saving me from. Thank you, Lord, for your hand of protection. Praise the Lord. Or you're going to send somebody to help me that I can witness to. I don't know. Praise God. 
if, and then, even though we're living in this crazy world, we're kind of thinking if if somebody does come try to help us, what's you know we're kind of like mm, kind of leery. But you know what? Whatever God's will is, you know, Lord, just pray for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Um, we got the gift of the Holy Ghost dwelling within us. We can, he's, he's, He can speak to us in that still, small voice. And we can listen. Um, and He can protect us. Or He could perform, have us do the, the miraculous right there in the rain. Changing the tire. I don't, we don't, I don't know. It doesn't always have to be sunny out for a miracle to take place. It, it doesn't have to be... Uh, it could be looking like it's one of our worst days starting out, right? But all of a sudden, then the Lord sends somebody that, you know, he wants us to minister to. And all of a sudden, then hopefully we're in the right attitude, <laughs> right mindset, right spirit. <coughs> Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. In conclusion, it says, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. There, that's powerful. Be empowered by your union with Him. Not your own strengths, not your own abilities, not your own whatever. But your union with Him and in the power of His boundless might, put on the full armor of God. For His precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may, may be able to successfully. So that you may be able to, not so that you might be able to, so that you may be able to successfully stand up. To me, this is that you are able to and you can and you will if we do this. If we stand in his strength, not our own. If we stand in ours, we're going to fail. We're going to, it's not going to happen. But if we stand in his strength, bound in, in union with him, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes. Not just a few things, but all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. We should put on the whole armor of God and be bound in union with, with him and his strength and his abilities. And I don't have to, I don't have to worry. You know, I, but we do, right? We do. Because we're, first of all, what? We're too much flesh and we take our eyes off. Just like Peter when he started sinking because he took his eyes off the Lord. We take our eyes off all the things that are, oh, the crazy, and you know. No, I just got to stay focused, you know, because we, <laughs> it's so funny. <coughs> My wife, that nurse that's in her, if we're going somewhere and there's like ambulance and stuff on the side of the road and whatnot, and she, like, for instance, not too long ago the other night, there was an ambulance. Somebody had driven off the road into the, like, the ditch, and people were flagging traffic and you know doing this and that and sending this lane and that lane. And then we started going, and we were by it. And I was in the passenger seat, and I was like, "Don't look," because it was dark out. And me and her both are having trouble seeing at night, driving and stuff. And the lights of these, some of these new lights on these cars and stuff are like make it really bad to see. And um, so we're driving by, and I was like, "Don't look." Don't be rubbernecking, but the nurse in her, she, <laughs> sure enough, I was like, now quit. I was like, no, nope, we don't want to be in this ditch over here. So just, uh, but it's just like, now I forget where I was going. We got to stay focused was what I'm trying to say. We got to stay focused on the Lord and not worry. And trust me, there's going to be things the enemy tries to get our attention with all kinds of things happening, right? Different things over here, different things over here, trying to get our focus off the Lord. Our own selfish desires, even you know, to where we're, you know, but we just got to stay focused on Him, and He's gonna He's gonna guide us the right way. He's gonna help us to get through, even when I can't see clearly, right? Even when I can't see what's ahead, He knows what's ahead. He knows where the obstacles are. He knows He knows exactly what's going on and what's taking place. This armor includes everything we need to defend ourselves against the attacks of the devil. And in verse 18 in Ephesians 6, um, <coughs> excuse me, verse 18 says that we put this armor on by praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So praying always, right? I can't pray today and then skip tomorrow and then, right? I need to pray every day. I need to, you know, praying 
constantly, right? I need to be in prayer all the time. And we can. We can have a spirit of prayer to where we're just always praying. Always in, you know, in, in union with him. You know, always connected to him by, his, first of all, it's by his spirit, right? So that's, we're connected by him. Um, connected to him by his spirit. Colossians 3, 5 through 10. So put to death and deprive, and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body. Um, with its sensual self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desire, and greed. We got a lot of things going on here that we need to deal with. Um, evil desire and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it replaces your devotion to God. I don't want anything to pl- replace my devotion to God. God help us, Lord Jesus. Help us to see things, Father, that we need to do in our lives. Help us to see things that we need to take care of in our lives. That we need to um, have these things um, removed from our lives. Because of these sinful things, the, the divine wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. Those who fail to listen and who routinely and obstinately disregard God's precepts. And in these sinful things you also once walked when you were habitually living in them without the knowledge of Christ. But now rid yourselves rid yourselves completely of all these things. So we got anger, rage, malice, slander. Obscene or abusive, filthy, vulgar language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old self with its evil practices. <coughs> and I put on the new spiritual self, who is being continually renewed in true knowledge and in the image of him who created the new self. So yes, this is talking about, you know, talking about putting off the deeds of the old man, that old flesh, putting on the new man, the man of the spirit. There's a lot of things here that we can, and if we're not dealing with it now, it might pop up later. It could pop up at any time, throughout the day, throughout the week. Ah, I've never dealt with that. That doesn't mean we're never going to face it. It could happen. You know, so we should never say, well, I've never faced that. I'm, not, I don't, I'm never going to face that. Ah, we, I don't know. We don't want to say that because we just don't know what can happen. We don't know what we're capable of, really, do we? When we get in, you know, we get... Farther we get further away from God and his spirit isn't working in us and through us or we're not in the flow right and we're not praying and we're not taking care of these things and we don't pray continually we're not you know that spirit or the, uh, not the spirit the, the the armor of God the enemy's finding those chinks and those weak points right so we're now those those uh, darts and those fiery darts and arrows are starting to hit those spots that he wants to hit Ooh, hitting us right here and it's in our, affecting our mind and all of a sudden you know. Now we're just starting to have these crazy thoughts, and then we uh, think something else prods us at somebody, a uh, coworker, neighbor, a family member, right? And they just hit that one point, they push that button, and all of a sudden now we go into this rage. And we were like, oh, that was something, oh, I never dealt with that before. Well, here it comes now, right? Not to saying that we, you know, but we've got to just stay focused on Him. And he, he's got to be the most important thing in our lives. We've got to be in prayer. We've got to be in his word. We've got to walk and live in the spirit and not after the things of the flesh and stay focused, right? Stay focused on him. And it's got to be, like it says, it's got to be putting in that work. It's got to be, this Christian life, it has to be work. I've got to put in that work to be successful, to be prosperous, right? Um, to where I don't fail. That I don't, you know, we got to watch thinking, well, maybe if I just stay close to so-and-so or I just grab a hold of so-and-so's coattail and I'm just going to (laughs) glide. That ain't going to work. Because what happens if this person that we're relying on all of a sudden falls into a ditch? What does the Bible say? You know, (coughs) (coughs) if we got the blind leading the blind, praise God. Um, the righteous spiritual man is like a coat we must put him on. Put it on the righteousness of God, right? We pray that we, because my righteousness is filthy rags. Anyways, Lord, that we would be robed in your righteousness. That we would hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God on a daily basis. And that we must wrap ourselves up in good works of the Spirit. Doing those good things, you know, like I said, doing those things that even though people might not see it or recognize it, it's... You know, I really, I, it bugs me when I hold the door open for somebody and they don't say thank you. 
But you know what? Am I doing it for that? I'm just doing it to be kind. Should I expect anything? I shouldn't. It's just it's just frustrating though because I would say thank you, but I can't I can't even let something as simple as that frustrate me so bad. So now I'm not going to hold anybody else's door open. That's not the right way to go about it. Um, and we shouldn't let it eat at us, right? <laughs> somebody you let somebody go in the car and they don't give you the wave. How <laughs> does that make you mad? It's okay if you say yes. <laughs> not anymore but it did mm-hmm. yeah it's a time, yeah we might as well just get over it and just let it okay lord this isn't really worth holding on to In fact, sometimes, I don't. sometimes you don't wave <laughs> oh hallelujah what, what, what scripture was I talking about here So this is verses 12 through 17. What was the last scripture? I was on Colossians 3. So as God's own chosen people, man, this cough is getting on my nerves. If it's getting on your, your nerves, I apologize. As God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose. So we're trying to be holy, right? We're trying to be set apart. I'm not we're not I'm not even talking about just look set apart from what everybody in the world is doing. So if we got the world and everybody's in this world, right? We've got to be set apart. So I've got to be over here. So first of all, yes, we're going to be recognized, right? I'm trying to be holy. And then you're going to get those all oh, holier than thou and you're trying to be better than me. No. I'm not trying to be better than you. I'm trying to be a better like I seen something somebody said or Posted recently that I'm trying to be better, a better me, not better than you, but I'm trying to get closer to him so I can be a better me. So, yeah, so we're set apart, sanctified for his purpose. So we're trying to be better. We're trying to be Christ like. Right. We're trying to be holy, set apart from what the world is doing, set apart what the world is thinking, set apart from, yes, what the world looks like, set apart. Yeah, from what the world sounds like. To where all that, but we need to be over here with the truth and love and kindness and forgiveness and peace, right? Uh, So yes, sanctified for his purpose, well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper. Woo! Hallelujah, work in there, work, work, work. Got to put in that work. We, we're, every one of us are a work in progress, guaranteed. You know, none of us are, none of us are there. Um, yes, but that, that right there, that's, yeah, which, that patience and that, the, the humility, the compassion, the kindness, the gentleness, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper, bearing graciously, with one another. That's another. But once again, it can. His word is instructing us, right? Because his word, it's instructing us because it can be done. It can. It can. And once again, it might be, it's going to be a work. It's going to, I can't just go home and then lift weights today and tomorrow I'm just, I'm in shape. I'm good to go. That's not going to happen. Being Christ-like is every, it's a work. There's every, it's steps. It's, I got, okay, I'm taking a step today. I'm not going to go back though. I'm going to, I took one step. I've made one step. I'm right here for it right now. Okay, Lord, that grace, it's your grace that's drawing me. It's your grace that's pushing me. It's your grace that's teaching me. It's your grace that's strengthening me, encouraging me to take, oh, let's take this other step. Oh yeah, get closer to God another day, another step. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we need to rejoice in that even. Not saying, oh, look at me. Re- oh, rejoice because, no, I'm not rejoicing because of me. I'm rejoicing because you are God and you are great. And there, 
I know I can't do this without you. And I know that it's you that's working in me, Father, because I can't do this. I want to do this, but I'm struggling, Father. But it's your grace, once again, that's helping me and, and, and prodding me and, and encouraging me, Father. I thank you for that. Because I know if this person would have jumped out at me like that yesterday, I would have been tore him up, you know, up and down, you know, this and that. And we would have toe to toe and whatever else might have happened. But thank you, Jesus, that you got me through that. And I was able to forgive and I was able to give a kind word even. And thank you, Father. Yes, so we can we can rejoice and have, you know, uh, those times of rejoicing with, you know, not like once again, not in ourselves, but because of him. Bearing graciously with one another, willingly forgiving each other if one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. <coughs> That's too right. Seeking the best for others. Ooh, man, sometimes, right? But the Bible says to pray for your enemies too. Bless them that curse you and despitefully use you. So yes, I gotta I gotta seek for the best for the for them. They're the others. They're part of the others, right? It doesn't matter who it is or what they've done. They're part of the others that I need to seek what the best for them. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with Him, and that's we can have that perfect peace because if we're walking with Him, then we have that peace. Yes. If we're walking with Him and we're fellowshipping with Him on a daily basis, I have that peace. I have that joy. I have that grace. I have whatever it is. Everything that I need, I have in him. And I've got to walk with him. Uh, that, that inner calm of the one who walks daily with him. Be the controlling factor in your hearts. Deciding and settling questions that arise. Something happens. What do I, oh, you know what? I got to respond in love. I got to respond with peace. Not malice and anger and frustration and unfor, you know, no. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers and be thankful to God always. Thankful to God always. Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on him, giving thanks to God the Father through him. <laughs> so whatever we do is saying, no matter what it is, do everything in the name of the Lord. Right. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, once again, by your grace. My mind... What is our, you know, my mind is thinking, oh, I can't do this, right? But Father, my faith is reaching out and it's saying, you know what? I can do this because of you giving thanks to God. Even if we're struggling, Father, thank you once again for the, the things that you're allowing to work at, work in my life. Thank you, Lord, for the different things that you're allowing to happen, Lord. Thank you for these opportunities, Father, because yes, I might have failed today, Father, but I know that you... I came to you in, in, in repentance. I asked for your forgiveness and you forgave me. I believe that, Father. And I know that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle, but I'm going to continue to strive. I'm going to continue to work it out with you. Because, you know, if I'm working out and I, I'm working out with heavy weights and I'm bench pressing, there's, I've got to have a spotter. Because if I'm doing too much weight and all of a sudden I can't do it anymore, it's going to be stuck here. I'm stuck. i got to have someone to help pick that weight back up and... And the Lord, he is working with us. The Bible says that he's working with us. Didn't it say that he was working with the apostles, performing signs and wonders, and you know, working with them, not against them. Sometimes we struggle to do the things we should and to not do the things we shouldn't. We need to learn how to put off and put on. First, we must know what God expects us to put on and put, put off and put on. And this knowledge comes by studying his word. So, right, we're going to learn these things by studying his word. He's going to, as we draw close to him throughout the day and we're in union, union with him, he's going to quicken us by that spirit that lives within us too throughout the day, right? 
So once we know what to put off, we must put it away, put it, put it out of our lives through repentance and denial. Okay, I got lying. I got a problem with lying. So, uh, Lord, would you forgive me of lying? Would you forgive me for these, th you know, that I can't tell, tell the truth all the time. Father, would you forgive me? I'm having a hard time. Forgive me of this, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm putting this off. We're going to lay it over here in the name of Jesus. By your grace, once again, hallelujah, Lord, and we're going to repent and we're walking away from it. Lord, I'm walking with you. I got to take your hand, Father, and I need to hold on, you know, and, and I'm going to walk with you. And you're going to you're going to change my mouth. You're going to change my language. You're going to change my communication. If he can change that or if he can change my tongue, right, when I submit to him and yield to him and I get filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden now I'm speaking that new language, that heavenly language, that tongue. Why can't he change my tongue to where I can't even lie anymore? Why can't he change it to where all I can just speak words of edification? I could just everything that comes out of my mouth, the communication, everything is sweet now. It's not, I don't have that bitter. You know, there's nothing bitter coming out of my mouth. My tongue now isn't lashing out. My lips, the fruit is is praise and thanksgiving. You know, unto God, first of all, but I can I can give people thanks. I can give people praise, not to praise him in the wrong way, but to as an encouragement. To where he can, you know, because, yeah, that thing we got, he's got to, what does it talk about, the hardest thing to be tamed, right? I mean, but if we could yield it to him when we're wanting to be filled with the gift of the Spirit, why can't we yield it to him throughout the day now to where, okay, Lord, oh, you want me to tell the person I love them, tell this person that you love them, whatever, whatever it might be, to where he changes us. In Jesus' name. Um... So once we know what to put on, we must make it a part of our lives through commitment and practice. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be practice. You got to practice, uh, you know, practice these things. Practice sharing, you know, things with people. Telling somebody, hey, proud of you. That was good, what you, you know, what you did yesterday. It might be, that's not an easy thing for me to tell people, you know, proud of them. I don't know why. It's just, it's, it's not, I don't know. I, I, Encouraging stuff like that, I guess, is it's difficult for me. I mean, I, I think it's probably just in my growing up. You know, I didn't. You know, dad wasn't in the house, so I. You know, I. You know, I don't know if he's like that now. You know, the relationship we have now is, is you know, because I just didn't know him when I was growing up. So I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe that's part of it, to where I don't know how to do the the I'm proud of you things. You know, so. I mean, I've done, I've said to people, but I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's a little difficult. So we're in, we're in the same boat there. <laughs> um, but the Lord can help us with that, right? right. Um, he can help us with that. And then he can, if we commit to it and we practice it, you know, what is prayer? I mean, prayer, you know, what is it's, we've got to practice that prayer too, right? right. Every day, you know, I, I mean, like I, first, like I said, when I first started in the church and I had, the folder and I had the different prayer, the wheel, and I had the this, and I had the, the keychain that had the different prayer things. You pray for your kids, had the pamphlets for praying for your pastor, and had the pamphlets for praying for missionaries. So yeah, I had all these things, but when you practice doing these things, it becomes part of, you know, it's game time now, right? You know, it becomes part of our lives, it becomes part of our prayer. It gets it's it, it gets ingrained in us, right? Because we're I don't know, we're just we're going to him every day. And we're, you know, conversing with him every day. And it just, after a while, we just grow in it, you know. Um, so we must deny the, and that's what it can be through practicing these different things throughout the day. You know, like I said, telling somebody, hey, I'm proud of you. Hey, I love you. I don't have a hard time telling people I love them. That's not difficult. But there's other things, you know, as for guys, you know, saying I was wrong. <laughs> but if we put it to practice. You know, God can help us with in that too. Um, <laughs> praise God. So the strength to follow through comes through spiritual prayer. Denial and commitment take place in our minds. <coughs> We're almost there. Who? How would some guys say? Well, I see the landing gear coming down. Um, Jude one twenty. It's just mainly just a couple more scriptures, really. Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, build yourselves up. On the foundation of your most holy faith, continually progress, rise like an edifice higher and higher, 
Pray in the Holy Spirit. So prayer infuses us with the spiritual power to do what we have decided in our minds to do, right? We desire those things. Lord, I, I desire to be a soul winner. I desire to be a teacher. I desire to be a prayer warrior. I desire to, right? And then, so prayer gives us that power to do those things. Uh, so in conclusion, like I said, the landing gear is down. I heard a squeech on the tarmac once, or the landing, uh, the runway. Galatians 3 and 27, for all of you who were baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union with, with the anointed, have clothed yourselves with Christ, that is, you have taken on his characteristics and values. So like I said, we put on Christ when we're baptized. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, but it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation and righteousness, making us acceptable to God, and sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart for God, and redemption, providing our ransom from the penalty of sin, for, for the penalty for sin. This says that being in Christ makes the power of wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption available to us. So these things are available to us. What is God making available to us throughout the day? All kinds of things. I mean, you know, uh, wisdom, righteousness, wisdom. You know, I want to make the right decisions throughout the day. I've, I've made some pretty boneheaded decisions in my life, right? Um, last thing, Romans 13, 11 through 14. <clears throat> Do this knowing that this is a critical time. It is already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep. Um, for our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed in Christ. The night or this present evil age is almost gone and the day of Christ's return is almost here. So let us fling away the works of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly and honorably as in the light of day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and irresponsibility, not in quarreling and jealousy. You know, how much oh, jealousy help us, Lord, to live, that the stronghold of jealousy would be torn down in our lives, that we would not be so jealous of one another. Help us, Lord. But clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for, nor even think about gratifying the flesh in regard to its improper desires. So uh, that we must take the initiative by casting off the works of darkness, putting on the Lord, wrapping ourselves up in the power of Christ, which can be activated in our daily lives only through, and we know the answer is prayer. Prayer, 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 and more prayer, and then more time with prayer when we think we prayed enough. You know, how, many, how, how often do we, it's okay, we're done. We, talk, or we clock out. I know we, hopefully we're not trying to clock in and out, but we, okay, I felt like a release, but we haven't really felt like a release. We just wanted to be done. Anybody ever? I've been there. And how, if we would just linger a little bit, right, sometimes to where we've done a whole bunch of talking and we haven't really allowed the Lord to any time at all to interject anything, really. Um, so, yeah, sometimes in prayer, I just like, okay, Lord, I'm shutting up. I'm going to close my mouth. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to have my hands lifted. And I'm just surrendering to you, Lord, and I would. Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to instill within me right now, Father, I give you this time and I pray that you would just help me so I would just yes. not do anything and just allow you to work and just, in Jesus' name. And a lot of the times when I do that, it's not but a few seconds and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost just starts talking. In the name, you know, it. it's not like we have, because he's... <laughs> It's like we were thinking it's going to take another hour for him to even step on the scene. And he's right there. And I just, once we just yield and completely surrender, Lord, I'm done talking, Father. Have your way. And I just close my mouth. And like I said, just most of the time, it's usually, you know, not that long. And all of a sudden, he just starts talking through me. And it's just like, how often do we miss out on that? Because we've decided, okay, this prayer time is, is over. Anyway, but so we don't. We know we need prayer. We know we need to participate. We need to be active in it um, throughout the day, every day, and hopefully we can all day. <laughs>
Anyway, if we could just close our eyes for a moment um, and thank the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you tonight. We exalt you and magnify your wonderful name. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. We exalt your name, Father, that your name would be praised, that your name would be sanctified in all the earth. And Father, that your name would be lifted up above every other name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this message tonight, Lord. And we ask that you would, by your grace, that you would empower us, Father, to, to apply these things, that these words, these instructions, Father, that we would apply the, this teaching, Father, to our lives, Lord. And that your word would bear good fruit within us, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we would draw near to you, Lord. That we would put off those things that your, your word instructs us to put off. And that by your grace that you would help us, Father, to put on those things that your word instructs us to put on. That we would put on Christ. That we would put on light. That we would put on the perfect love of God. That we would put on the garment of praise, Father. In the name of Jesus. That we would put off anger and, and malice and wrath, Father, in the name of Jesus. And that we would put on the peace and the love. And that we would put on forgiveness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would help us, Lord, with our mouths. That we would speak life. That we would speak truth. That we would speak edification, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and I lift up the body of Christ. I lift up believers, Lord. I lift up those that are part of the Rock Church right now, Lord, that we would be united together in one mind and one accord with you, Lord, that we would be bound with your power tonight, that we would be bound with the cords of your perfect love, that perfect love that cannot be broken in the name of Jesus. And I speak refreshing in the name of Jesus. I speak the peace, the love, the joy, and the righteousness of God right now. I speak the grace of God to be manifest in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that we would be renewed, that we would be refreshed, that we would be revived as the body in the name of the Lord. And Father, I receive everything that you have for us tonight, Lord. I receive every gift. I receive correction. I receive instruction and direction, Father. In the name of Jesus, we are once again grateful to you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I bless you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being for us and not against us. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.